First candle. Second candle. Third candle. Fourth candle. Fifth candle. Now to drink. Yeah, I don't fuck around with banshees. Thank you very much. Why do I have to be drunk for this? Nub nubbing over here. I'll deal with that in a minute. That was a fun little boss fight. Huh? Some kind of locked little box around here. Aha! Thanks for the loot. Dust covered journal. The journal's only part from age, only a few entries can be deciphered. The 16th day of the month of Lamas, year 1178. We've only a few days left before the premiere. They said even Duke Roger and his favorite Countess de, Stecle de Chiel will be in attendance. This role, it shall be my ag magnum opus. I feel no stage fright or nervousness about my upcoming performance, but I am terrified by her, Anika. She turns her Chardonnay red with jealousy as soon as we step on stage together. Is it my fault that the provincial actress and elf to boot is not as talented as I? Does she truly expect something? The 24th day of of the month of Lamas year 1178. Her hatred is near palpable. I'm terrified. I spoke to the director about this, but I think he did not take me seriously. He's too absorbed in the premiere, which is approaching rapidly. The 29th day of the month of Lamas year 1178. Anika has been rooting around in my thing. She read this journal. I caught her red handed sitting in my room. I'm horrified by how I reacted. I exploded naturally, screamed at her at first, but a single look from her, uh, from her froze that scream in my throat with fear. I must take all my most valuable possessions and hide them in the amphitheater. I shall now wear the key to my chest on my person at all times, hanging from this necklace the jeweler made for me. The 33rd day of the month of Lamas, year 1178. It gets worse and worse. I fear she wishes to kill me. I feel an itch in my back, presaging her dagger, or perhaps this itch in my throat. Is that her as well? Shall it be poisoned then? Very theatrical of her either way. Gods, I swear, if that despicable creature does anything to hurt me, I shall turn this amphitheater into an earthly hellscape. Well, got, hey, you got to give her marks. She, uh, she, uh, stuck to her guns on that particular last note. All right, so there's a cave down here we can explore in a second. First, I heard some little nub nubs over here. Hello? Oh, Whoa, okay. Bullshit, but okay.
Yeah, yeah, blub blub. What you do to the poor fisherman in here? Oh, it's locked. Interesting. Okay. Maybe I'll find something in the cave. Is she Gorda's backstabber? No. Who? <laughs> Someone placed an illusion here. Oh, interesting. I wonder if the elf might be down here. Nope. Just loot. Huh. Weird, but okay. All right. I think we're done over here. Yes. Good. I love it. All right. So let's make our way back. We've done the ex machina thing. So let's go deal with. Let's go deal with the um, the Ver Vermentino vineyard problems. Uh, the fastest way back. Oh, there's a boat here. Let's head for the boat. God fucking. Ugh. Okay, good. It didn't break. I have a wire I need to like pin because it's like right where the level I like to hang my foot at. So like sometimes when I'm moving, I accidentally bump it. I, I need to buy a standing mat for my desk so I can use it in standing mode from time to time because I think that'll give me more energy when I stream. <laughs> I dove into the boat. You still have to turn in the Machina? Oh, you have to turn it in? Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, well, I'm going to go I'm going to go do all these little these little Another things first. Wretched foul lizard thing joins the red host. Curse it, Sotek. That way we can just go get it all done at once. Hello Sotek. Can I get a story about Manfred von Karstein? Uh Epsilon 117. Hello, welcome. And yes, you absolutely may. Uh, I actually had a really fun conversation with about Manfred von Karstein not too long ago with uh Steve Darlington, Steve D, um ah. on Lowbeards. Um, which if you haven't checked it out, you totally should. But, um, uh, let's see, what's a particularly good story about Manfred? Um, probably a really good story about him that not a lot of people appreciate is that Manfred is actually one of the few vampires that has managed to go toe to toe with Kalita and walk away with his life, his on life. Um, so after the whole incident of Hellfen. So Hellfin was the was the concluding battle of the Vampire Wars, right? It was this big epic finale, this terrifying uh, final battle where the dwarfs managed to team up with the men of the Empire, and together they successfully um, brought they they finally cornered Manfred and Hellfin, and their um the uh you know big final battle broke out um and ultimately it was uh a Come hero on. of the empire um i forget what his name is off the top of my head but uh, a great hero of the empire managed to get to manfred and cut him down and manfred's body fell into the uh into the fen and he you know like vanished so it was he was presumed dead and if you go back to the older lore he actually was dead but in the more modern lore they revealed that manfred did not actually die that day instead he basically faked his death so he went down and kind of realized that um he did not really have he did not have the ability or the power to successfully um take on the empire and, like deal with all these threats so he thought to himself all right i i need to become more powerful like i think so he decided to go into hiding and once in hiding um he figured that he just needed to gain more power to understand more about necromancy more about dark magic more about where vampires drew their power from so uh manfred one of the big major things that he did was that he went on a kind of personal quest to obtain knowledge and so the 
the most notable thing he did he did a couple things during this time involving this lots of the other different vampire bloodlines but the most important thing he did was that he went to go visit lamia he went back excuse me he went back to where it all began where you know all of the original vampires were founded and all of that those goodies hey i remember this guy augustin tonale um ladislas they've robbed the barrels from our storehouse we must prepare a new batch and quickly effect efficiently read your instructions carefully chop down eight chestnuts prepare planks from them as quickly as you can then send the planks to be lied then find 12 uh acacias chop them down and remove the bark we'll apply finish to the chestnuts as soon as they're back from leaching don't let any lads go out to work alone and send them in twos at the very least we've heard those voracious yellow plants are liable to sprout up anywhere there are true banes to be careful augustine cooper I do um they pay me to but anyway so it. the the place that manfred went was down to lamia Slow. and as he worked his way down um he when he went into the city itself manfred did not realize that even with all of his sorcery, all of his tricks, all of his secrecy, that the Tomb Kings, particularly Kalida, was one step ahead of him. Because Kalida, she hates vampires, right? She hates vampires more than anything else in the universe. And so Kalida had worked with the Lich Priest to set up basically an unbreakable and borderline undetectable trap. Go, go. Um, uh, essentially like a, a, a tripwire almost, a magical tripwire that if any vampire crossed into Lamia, uh, crossed the borders into the city, then they, she would be basically immediately alerted. And so she was. So Kalida immediately set out um, at the head of her legions and went out to go fight uh, whoever it was that had entered Lamia um because she knew it was a vampire because she knows that like vampires are going to be drawn back there to the place where they originate from it only makes sense that they would want to return um there's too much power for them not to there, there, there's too much potential knowledge fuck me okay um so uh she made her uh she makes her way there and when manfred realizes that she's coming i owe um, you my life unknown knight who the hell how are you dubbed dubbed Geralt, Geralt of rivia my thanks sir Geralt. the scully wax sought to demolish our herb garden you see i thought i shall take a hum scare the rubble off but to my great chagrin there were too many and i i failed Ah, there's no use crying over spilt wine. Come with me to Vormentino. I'll patch up your armor or pound the anvil to fulfill some other need you might have. Oh, he's a blacksmith. Uh, I'll come by later. Okay, I'll, I'll catch you then. Go ahead. I'll stop by when I'm in the area. Neat. Um, anyway, so, uh, Manfred... Uh, eventually realizes that Kalida's coming for him and he makes his preparations like he summons a vast army of the dead he does his best to kind of break the spirits um, that are contained within Lamia to his will and was very successful at doing so um, now granted he did acquire a ton of knowledge from Lamia he learned a lot uh, about further secrets of necromancy um, and he basically got what he came for but then Kalita showed up, and the two of them got into a very big spat. Uh, so Manfred was doing everything Move in his it. power to obliterate her with overwhelming magical f power, um, as well as, you know, utilizing his own skills in combat. But Kalita is terrifying. Hey. Um, and there really is no character better at killing vampires than Kalita is. Like, she specializes in putting down vamp vampires because she she takes away a lot of the advantages they take for granted um and kind of uses it against them where she's freakishly fast like unbelievably fast she's also incredibly strong incredibly tough you know she doesn't feel pain 
you can she can have like massive parts of her body destroyed and it does not bother her like hell you could even obliterate kalita like reduce her to ash and that would not kill her it would inconvenience her um but it and you know you could at least get away um but her and manfred have a really big fight and during it uh, kalita deals manfred a pretty serious wound uh she manages to strike him with a quite formidable Faster. blow with the serpent staff and manfred's finally like all right fuck this i'm, I'm out <laughs> so manfred did what he does best um in many cases and he ran away uh so manfred did uh almost kind of surprisingly managed to escape kalita's clutches so he left the rest of his army and minions to die but he fled uh north and did manage to successfully get away uh from the serpent Queen before she uh, had the ability to put him down for good Funny that the strongest anti-vampire sits right on top of the vampire's place of power. Well, I mean, she's there on purpose. Like she, she, she uses it as a honey trap for vampires. How do you kill a vampire for good? You can't really. Um, you can. You basically need to obliterate anything and everything that was in any way associated with them during their life or unlife. So you need to like fully incinerate their bodies. You need to um, you have to you need to fully incinerate their body. You need to um, completely and utterly melt down and destroy any and all of their equipment, preferably to ash or some kind of like ingot or whatever, and bury it somewhere. Like tell like some laborers or workers to go bury it, and then uh, when those people get back, kill them so nobody knows where it is. And make sure that they get sent away and buried and melted down and whatever by other people so that no necromancer can like resurrect them or call upon their spirits in an attempt to figure out where they buried what was left of the vampire um uh you you would need to make absolutely certain that no one ever under any circumstances could find anything associated with that vampire and you would also need to kind of wipe them from history. So like you would need to make sure that their name isn't recorded or remembered. You need to make sure that anyone who was associated with them is not remembered or recorded. And you need to make sure that all of their personal belongings are gone. Anywhere they may have lived is utterly burned down. Like you gotta just erase them from existence. Um, that is the only way you can ensure they'll stay dead. And even that's not really a guarantee depending on how powerful they were my dar my darling milani i write you this letter while lapping up the last rays of the sun which is just now hiding behind the horrendous crest of mount gorgon it shall not be a long letter for two reasons the first it will soon be too dark to write and the second i have important duties to attend to miss matilda has ordered me to see to the security of a newly built vineyard on pavon slope and to see to it attentively for ill business is afoot at late at our vermentino when not bandits it's these yellow monstrous parasites i'll spend some time here withering with longing for you my darling like a vine pining for the touch of life-giving light yours forever laurent oh that's sad he was very he was very poetic any of y'all like uh writing poetry chat i was always fond of writing like poetic love letters and stuff when I was in relationships. I love that kind of shit. I like to use, I, I like to try and very much stretch my uh Sorry! <laughs> my bad. Um I always like to try and stretch my uh writing muscles. But it's been a long time since I've I've had that privilege. Whoa good job. Is Kalita on the market? Uh, Kalita is not married. And he here's the best part about Kalita. So K Kalita is the is the most favored of Asaf, right? The the Ask Goddess, also known as the Goddess of uh, Beauty, Vengeance, 
uh, and the ass. But, uh, so Asaf has a really cool party trick. And this really crazy cool party trick is that whenever Kalita goes down to slumber, so she uh, goes into, no, asp, with a P, like a snake. Um, whenever she basically lies down to slumber in her sarcophagus, um, over the course of her death slumber, when Kalita reawakens for a time after she awakens, she appears just as beautiful as she was in life so um, for a limited time. So like all of her flesh is back and she's basically like a full living person. Um, but over the course of like days, uh, her body will very uh, quite rapidly wither away so that it returns to the state uh, of like as she is in death. Last time I wrote a poem, it got absolutely obliterated over its quality. Oh, that's not nice. Was it for like a class or was it like you, you wrote for someone else and they were mean about it? Geralt's ride is terrible. Only one horsepower. Because if it was like a gift and somebody shit on it, that's super not cool. That's rude as fuck. Sometimes you try to make a haiku. Oh, that's cool. Teaspoon as well. Thank you so much for the 19. Oh, fuck. Um, thank you very much for the uh, the 19 months. I really appreciate it. Daryl's writing is terrible. Only one horsepower. Don't horse. Okay. Well, first of all, okay, Joe. Second of all, don't horses actually have like considerably more than one horsepower? I forget what the exact number is, but it's like it's higher than you think. Dude, I'm getting like sick of these flowers. Be gone. Destroy the area if I want to get rid of them for good. See ya. Have I read the books? The books. Give me, give me, give me, give me something to work with here. Okay, so yes, we're gonna go do this now. Talk to Liam and Matilda. All right, let's boogie. Hundred and fifty feet away. Witcher books? No, I have not. I got. I'm. I'm still working my way through. My my book reading time goes to Warhammer Fantasy and Age of Sigmar. I I really don't have time for anything else. Haircut and beard look beautiful. Thank you. Yes, the lovely woman at Roosters did a good job. I'm going to get my beard trimmed one more time um, in the coming, like, in the next week. Probably next week. Because my brother's wedding. Uh, my brother. Oh God, it's coming up so fast. My brother's wedding is in 12 days. I care about one thing only. Acquiring Belgard. I will make an infinitely better steward than she will. Pretty face is hardly enough if the head it adorns is empty. Says the most foppish philandra of the southern reaches. You do better to tend to your vineyard and look less to the grape stomping lasses. Sup, nerds? Master Witcher, have you any news? Uh. Wait, have I never done this? This vineyard, Belgard. Why is it so valuable? <laughs> you are not from here. It certainly shows. Before Count Crespi fell prey to the beast, Belgard belonged to him. As a man of wealth and influence, he guided it to immense success, brought in rare grape varieties, hired skilled workers. I shan't trouble you with unnecessary details. Suffice to say that merging Belgard with another vineyard is a sure recipe for success. One and the same man caused Coronada's and Vermentino's problems. Got proof. A certain Count Crespi. He's at the root of it all. What? Crespi? Belgard's erstwhile owner? Why, that's impossible. Got it all here, in writing. 
He did indeed have motive. He knew well his own vineyard could not survive if Vermentino and Coronata were to join forces. Probably why he incited the feud. Pulled it off, too, mostly. Just failed to bring his plan to completion when the beast got him. Incredible. You mean to say it... it wasn't Liam? And I was certain my troubles were Matilda's doing. <clears throat> oh, just shut up and kiss In you, too. In light of new evidence, uh, the most just resolution would be for both injured parties to share oversight of Belgard. Wait just a minute. Do you mean to suggest we're to cooperate? Just it's hate fuck each other and move on. Let's yes. go. In terms of the health of the Enterprise as well? Hmm. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do believe he's right. Perhaps it is time to bury the hatchet. Three vineyards are more than one. There's much to be gained. So be it. That's not all. The troubles at your vineyards? Solve them. You can go back to operating normally now. Nice. Splendid news. I'm relieved to see you hired a professional, especially one whose aid might still prove invaluable. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Follow me. It's high time you saw Belgard. Witcher, come with us, please. Something tells me we'll have tasks for you yet. Fine, fine, fine. All right, let's go. Yeah, okay, we just completed like three quests with My one strike. For was no oh, so win. good. But the vineyard's fallen upon hard times since its previous owner's demise. I've been told of workers dying on their rounds, monsters prowling about. Before anyone can call this home, they will have to deal with these um, inconveniences. That is the minister's wish. More work for me, I guess. If you're willing, we'll gladly accept your help. Uh, yeah, pay me though. I can help, sure, but I won't work for free. Holy moly! Look at all that. Look at all that coin. Uh, let's go for eleven twenty-five. A bit less? Is that out of the question? Fine. Uh, flat, flat. Uh, oh, eh, ten eighty-five. Fine. We have a deal. Hey, sir. What's up, hon? More or less already agreed, I guess. Oh, How are you? That's a weight off my chest, I must say. Your reward shall be fair, I promise. I'll get to work. That I will. Wine wars. All right. Let's go kick some ass. I like how I've already solved one of them. Am I just in like a completely different part of the map? Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, good. Oh, man, we're getting real close to finishing all the question marks. Oh, we're, <laughs> we're getting so close. Okay. Roach. Get over here. Still glued in bed. Well, that doesn't sound healthy. Who put all that sticky glue in your bed? Peacock. It's cool. Hey, uh. Wolves, I honestly could not care less. Oh. Hello. Oh, boy. You may want to move. Ow! I 
don't think so. 